<laughs> Praise the Lord. Wretched knucklehead here, a.k.a. Brother Emily Julian. Brothers and sisters, let's turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 5, and we'll be looking at verses 11 to 13. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe in the name of the Son of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admonition, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brothers, this is God's word. And we give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious and the powerful, priceless name of his dear son, our Lord, our Savior, soon to come in King Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. In 1 John, the apostle John writes this epistle letter in the fifth chapter of, in verse 11, he brings in this great truth in uh, the fifth chapter of first John where he writes and this is the record and this record is a divine document from God that God has given to us the believers eternal life and this life this eternal life is in his son our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he that hath the son hath life he that believe and hath the son our Lord and Savior Jesus hath life this eternal life and he that hath not the Son of God, he that believes not on the Son of God, hath not life, hath not the eternal life. And then the Apostle John turns up the notch, the intensity of this great truth, where he categorically, emphatically, vehemently declares this great truth, taken from this divine document, where he says, these things have I written unto you. That believe in the name of the Son of God. This is, oh, this is to the believer. Believe in the name of the Son of God. That you may know. That you be confident. That you be rest assured. That you know that you have eternal life to the believer. Even them that believe in the name of the Son of God. You know, God, Abba Father, essentially wrote his word. The God's word. His holy sacred, sacred scriptures. So that we may know that we have eternal life. These things God has written so that the believer, that they believe in the name of the Son of God, may know that they have, they have eternal life. And what are these things that he has written that we may know that we have eternal life? Well, these things God has written that we may know that we are the sons of God. You know, in John chapter 1, verse 12, the apostle John writes, and as many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. So God has written these things so that we may know that we are the sons of God. You know, these things God has written that we may know that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You know, in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 to 14, the Apostle Paul writes, In whom we have trusted. And after that, we've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and in whom also we believed that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Also, the Apostle Paul writes in reference to when God is writing these things that we may know that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. He says, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, he writes, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, for you are sealed to the day of redemption and sealed to with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, when we are redeemed and we get the believers get their glorified, the resurrected, glorified body, the glorified supernatural body, because we're sealed unto the day of redemption, and we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. These things God has written 
that we may know that we're secured in God. You know, in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30, the Apostle Paul writes, And all these things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called to the purpose. For he foreknew, for he who foreknew, he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, the firstborn of many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, he called. The ones who was called according to his person, he called. And who he called, he justified. And who he justified, he glorified. You see, the Lord God, our Father, uh, foreknew who was to believe so that we were predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the firstborn of many bedrooms. And moreover, whom he predestined, he called according to his purpose. And whom he called, he justified, just as and we are now in Christ. And whom he justified, he glorified. That glorified is when we get our redeemed body sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And so these things have I written that you may know that you're secured in God. You know, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, he says, Having predestined us to the adoptions of children by Christ Jesus to himself, according to to his good, the good pleasure of his will. It was his good pleasure when we, he foreknew that we were predestined to be the adoptions of children by Jesus Christ to himself. And this is according to the good pleasure of his will that we know that we are, know these things that God has written, that we know that we're secured in God. Oh, what's another thing, these things that God has written? That we may know that we are seated in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. The apostle Paul writes. He has raised us up together. And made us seat in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if we take 1 John chapter 4 verse 17. Where he says. Here is our love made perfect. That in we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And if we're seated in heavenly places, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, then positionally, we just as Jesus is seated in heavenly places, so are we seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Is Christ Jesus is seated in heavenly places? We too are seated in heavenly places. And these things have God has written that we may know that we are seated in Christ. What's another thing? Well, these things God has written so that we may know that we are sheltered in Christ. You know, in John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30, the our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, My sheep hear my voice. And they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and nothing shall pluck them out of my hand. So the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives us the eternal life, which we see in first John chapter five, verse 11. God has given us eternal life. So Jesus has given us eternal life. We will never perish and nothing shall pluck. And then nothing shall pluck it out of our Lord and Savior Jesus' hand. And then he takes it up even, uh, even further where he says, My Father, which has given them to me, is greater than all these things. And nothing shall pluck them out of my Father's hand. My Father and I are one. So we have Jesus holding us, giving us eternal life, never will never perish. Nothing shall pluck any anything shall pluck Jesus out of us from the Jesus' hand. 
than God, the Father, who gave them, gave us to Jesus. He is greater than all, greater than any opposition, greater than any hardship, greater than any heartache, greater than any trials, greater than any tribulation, greater than anything, greater than anything that comes against us. It's greater than that. He's holding. And nothing shall pluck them out of God's hand, out of Father's hand. And he's greater than all. And Jesus and the Lord Jesus and God are one. So we have that shelter. That shelter in God, in our Lord and Savior Jesus and God. That double ironclad surety in the shelter of the Lord. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, the Apostle Peter writes, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. That power of God is what keeps us in that shelter, the believer. And it's through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. So we know these things have been written by God so that we know that we're the sons of God, that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, that we're secured in God, that we're seated in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we're sheltered. And what's another truth? These things God has written that we may know that we are sanctified in Christ Jesus. You know, first Peter chapter one, verse two says the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. And that obedience is the obedience of Christ. Unto obedience, the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, that precious blood of Jesus Christ that forgives us of all our sins, that, 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 that gives us the, the eternal life. That's an access to the throne that redeems us, that reconciles us back to the Father, that delivers us from, from any kinds of, um, of evil, that, th that gives us peace, that surpasses all of us, that protects us, that provides for us that blood, that sprinkling. And guess what? To follow up with 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, where we're sanctified, he says, that grace unto you and peace be multiplied unto you because we're sanctified in Christ. These things have I written that you may know that you are sanctified. And then lastly, what's another thing that, that, that great truth that we kind of, these things that God has written that we may know that we are saved. You know, the apostle Peter in first Peter chapter one, verse four, paints a beautiful illustration of this great truth of our salvation where he says in first Peter chapter one verse four to an inheritance that inheritance is our salvation to an inheritance that's incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away and it's reserved in heaven for you the believer because you're saved and then we see now the, the heart of the heart nature of Abba Father writing this great divine document to convey to the believers that these things have I written that you may know that you're the son of God, that you may know that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, that you may know that you're secured in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus, that you know that you're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, that you know that you're sheltered in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ and that you're sanctified by the spirit and that you're saved. And once you are saved, praise the Lord, you are always saved. <laughs>
<laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his conscience. May the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now to him that is able to keep you from fall and present you faultless in the presence of the Lord, both glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> You're the son of God. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You're secured in God and secured in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're sheltered in the Lord. You're sheltered in Abba Father. You're sanctified in the Spirit. And you are saved. <laughs> Again, once you're saved, you're always saved. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Agape love.